be here. Um, thank you, Sam, for sharing your story. Thank you, um, Jamie and Asa, for this amazing opportunity. I want to talk about my journey here as a journey in rule breaking. Now, before you go on thinking I'm a rebel, let me tell you, when I was a kid, I cared about school and gymnastics. In high school, I was training eight hours a day, doing school full time. And so while um, some of my peers were breaking the rules by going out to parties, my sneaking around my parents was putting a towel in the crack under my door so I could stay up late doing my homework <laughs> without my parents bothering me about going to bed on time. So I'm not a natural rule breaker per, per se, but I've done it to get to where I am. And when I say rules, I really mean cultural and family norms that often feel like hard class rules. So my parents immigrated from Taiwan. My dad came to the US to get his PhD in electrical engineering. Um, and for him, education was his way out of poverty. So I was supposed to carry forth this legacy, get a good education, a good job, make a lot of money, raise a family. And so now um, I'm in college, I'm at Yale, I'm on my way there, I get a good job in consulting, um, but I realized I don't want to do this forever. So I apply to econ PhD programs and I get rejected from all of them. It's okay. I'll apply to business school, naturally. I apply to business school, get rejected from all of them. So now I feel pretty low about myself and um, for the first time in my life, I'm clueless. I don't know what is supposed to come next. So I, you know, but this phrase that I had heard in college, but never from my family, follow your passion. I was like, well, I guess I'll give that a try. Um, and I did, I did some really deep soul searching and I thought, what really gets me fired up? Now in college and while I was working, I spent a lot of time volunteering at local nonprofits, working with youth um, in underserved parts of the cities I was living in. And upon reflection, I saw that I really enjoyed that work. And also, I saw how the students I worked with were smart, creative, hardworking, but unlike me and unlike my dad, you know, we had access to high quality education. They had been deprived of it, of no fault of their own. So once I saw this, it wasn't something I could turn a blind eye to, especially knowing the power of education for myself and for my father. So I decided then, I care about this, I'm gonna dedicate the rest of my career to improving educational equity, um, at least in the United States. So I tell my parents this, and my dad, he says, Alina, how can you help, your, how can you help others when you can't even help yourself? Now, I understand where my dad was coming from. For him, he had to fight for himself, for his survival his whole life, and that was his universe. But because of his blood, sweat, and tears, I, was, I had the privilege, I still have the privilege, to not have to worry about that. Um, so I can look beyond myself and really devote my life to, you know, what I see as, like, as fighting for our shared humanity. So um, that was the path I took. And I couldn't really answer my father, but I committed to that. Um, also, I reapplied to business school and finally got in. <laughs> yeah, so that um, is one part of my journey. Another rule I want to touch on briefly is that I have become someone who has embraced my feelings. Yes. <laughs> in my family, nobody ever asked, how are you? How are you feeling? At best, it was, how are your grades? Um, and this became more extreme in my teenage years where my mother struggled with depression and mental health didn't exist in my family. And my father responded with anger and shame and they got trapped in this vicious cycle. And it was hard for me to see that, but I didn't know I could talk to someone about this. So my response was to shut off my feelings, one, to cope, and two, I had internalized this narrative that feelings are weakness. But you know, once I moved away, really the last 10 years of my life, um, a lot of it has been processing these experiences. And I've kind of gone through this emotional awakening, and I didn't realize it at the time, but this has been crucial in my development as a leader, as an entrepreneur. It's how I've been able to get to know myself on that profound level, know what are my passions, what are my strengths, how, um, where do I get joy from, how do I respond to fear and failure and uncertainty. 
And so just to, to bring it together, um, to close, um, I have I have been breaking rules, as I say, um, and it's not always easy, right? I, I carry the weight of stress and disappointment and sometimes shame that this, this creates my family because of different world perspectives. I carry that weight, but I don't let it control me because at the end of the day, we get one chance at life. So you have to ask yourself, who are you going to live it for? Thank you.